On the morning of July 23rd, 1993, a profound and heart-wrenching tragedy unfolded in Brazil, shaking the nation to its core. This event, which made worldwide headlines and deeply challenged prevailing notions of justice, took place in downtown Rio at the historic Candelaria Church. This Roman Catholic church, dating back to 1775, had long been a beacon of hope and peace and a refuge for the city's and house population. However, on the fateful night, the church's steps, which usually offered safe haven to unhoused minors, became a scene of an appalling act of violence. Over 70 individuals seeking shelter on those steps were suddenly confronted by a convoy of vehicles carrying more than 50 police officers in what was reportedly a response to previous stone-throwing incidents. The officers brutally opened fire on the unsuspecting miners. Tragically, this senseless act resulted in the deaths of 11 young people, ranging in age from 11 to 19. In a city that had done very little to care for children, for the poor, the unhoused, a chorus of voices rose after the incident calling for justice to be served. This call to justice transcended social, ethnic, and religious boundaries, offering a glimpse of hope for those who for too long had been ignored and felt unseen. But in the face of such senseless brutality, what is justice really? When we talk about justice, we may hear the words of prophets of old echoing in our ears. Words from the prophet Amos saying, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Words from the prophet Isaiah saying, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Or perhaps even the prophet Hosea who spoke the words of God saying, but as for you, return to your God, hold fast to love and justice and wait continually for your Lord. But you look at justice. Solely through the lens of external action is to greatly limit the biblical concept of justice itself. Justice from a biblical perspective encompasses a very broad spectrum of life, including personal and social dimensions, public and private spheres, political and religious domains, and interactions involving both human and non-human elements. The core of our Christian understanding of justice is that justice comes from the very nature of God, and it is what God demands of those who follow him. In our modern world, it is possible that we may have an uneasy relationship with the Old Testament, its language of justice, and its notions of law. Many of us have been witnesses to uninformed applications of biblical mandates in current society. Mandates that too often are distorted to comply with personal notions of morality while ignoring the fact that the Hebrew scriptures transport us into an ancient time with practices that are well beyond much of our comprehension. But it's still the perennial invitation of the scriptures is for us to wrestle with this text that challenges us, explore the meaning, and grow in our faith. We cannot ignore the reality of the scriptures, but neither can we blindly apply them as if the realities of the world today and our relationship with God is the same as those who originally received this message. It is important to note that our Christian Bible opens with the books of the law, books that our Jewish siblings regard as the most sacred among the writings of the Hebrew Bible. And while we often associate the word Torah with law, Torah simply means instruction. Those who had lived in bondage received new guidelines on how to relate to the one who created them, how to treat one another, and how to care for the stranger in their midst. How to care for the world and how to lead lives to witness that the people of Israel served a God who is above all others. This is not a small task, and those of us who stand at a distance from these narratives still have much to learn from them. 
in the opening chapters of Genesis, we encounter the tragic story of Cain and Abel. Two brothers who presented sacrifices before the Lord, but only one was accepted. In anger, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. God spoke to Cain and inquired of his brother's whereabouts. But Cain answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? When we could look at the story of Cain and Abel, like any story of tragic violence, as an individual who, for reasons unknown, chose to take action against another. But the story of Cain and Abel extends far beyond a mere account of personal violence. It is a narrative steeped in lessons about responsibility, kinship, and the broader implications of our actions. But the story of Cain and Abel extends far beyond a mere account of personal violence. It is a narrative steeped in lessons about responsibility, kinship, and the broader implications of our actions. The question posed by Cain, am I my brother's keeper, echoes through the ages, resonating profoundly with the tragic events at Candelaria Church. It confronts us with the perennial challenge of justice, our collective responsibility towards each other particularly our responsibility towards those who are vulnerable and marginalized. God's journey with humanity is a reflection of this question. God's continued accountable relationship with Cain, the promise to Abraham, deliverance from slavery in Egypt, the journey through the wilderness, entrance into the promised land, life in exile, and the life and ministry of Jesus, all of these things witness to God's care for those who suffer and the grand desire for a reality that reflects not our propensity to sin, but the original goodness breathed into all of us. We may struggle with the law because we do not understand its true purpose. As I mentioned, the law was given, the law was designed to offer a people who had spent generations in bondage how to live in freedom. The tragedy at Candelaria is not just a tale of individual wrongdoing. It reflects systemic issues, societal neglect, institutional failures, and a disrespect for the sanctity of human life. It reminds us that justice in the biblical sense is not confined to individual acts, but encompasses societal and systemic dimensions of our existence. This broader concept of justice is foundational to our understanding as Christians. The biblical narrative from Genesis through the Torah and the prophets consistently calls us to a higher standard of communal living. It is a call to establish societies where the rights and dignity of every individual are upheld, where the needs of the poor and the oppressed are addressed, and where care for creation is integral to our way of life. In the wake of human suffering and tragedy, we are compelled to ask ourselves, how are we responding to the cries of the vulnerable in our midst? Are we like Cain, evading our responsibility with indifference, or are we actively seeking to be our brothers and sisters' keeper? The good news of God's love revealed in Jesus Christ calls us to be agents of change, to be voices for the voiceless, and to embody the love and justice of Christ in our communities. While too often we hear words from the Old Testament as warning and condemnation, the invitation is for us to hear these words as an invitation to live into a new reality and to upheld a new standard. Where all people are indeed created in the image of their creator and are worthy of love and care. As we reflect on the faithful events of the night in Rio, let us challenge ourselves to re-examine our understanding of justice 
as we reflect on the countless, sense, countless incidents of senseless violence that we experience in our own nation and in our communities. Let us be driven to action not only in addressing the symptoms of injustice, but in tackling the root causes of it. Should be, be it poverty, inequality, or discrimination. Our faith calls us to be more than mere expectators. It calls us to be active participants in God's work of restoring all creation. In this Lenten season, as we journey with Jesus to the cross, let us remember that the path of Christ is one of radical love, and radical justice. It is a path that challenges the status quo, uplifts the downtrodden, and brings hope to the despairing. As followers of Christ, we are called to walk in this path to be instruments of God's justice in a broken world. Justice is not about retribution or retaliation, but it is about making right the beautiful creation that God has given us. May our hearts be stirred, our spirits awakened, and our actions aligned with the divine call for justice and righteousness. Let us pray, work, and hope for a world where tragedies like Candelaria's massacre are no more, and where God's justice and peace reign supreme. Amen. Here at the Vine United Methodist Church, we are cultivating groups of hope, healing, and belonging. We're calling them branches, and we would love for you to be a part of one. Go to thevineumc.church and sign up to be part of a branch. We'd love to get you connected.